Hello, my friends, and welcome in to another edition of Tears for Fears, the tier ranking video game series. And today we have a, you know, a series of franchise that is very near and dear to the hearts of many old school gamers, many gamers who grew up in the 80s. We hold these, these games very close to our heart. They're special for a variety of reasons that I will hit on throughout this whole tier ranking video. So without further ado, the title we are talking about, yes, the title that is on the video description, Contra. And Contra's had a very interesting history. It's had, you know, it's ups and downs. Uh, not every video game franchise can have nonstop hits. Very few actually ever do. There's always some misfires along the way, some more than others. You know, if you look at the history of, say, the Sonic the Hedgehog series, it's definitely had its fair share of ups and downs, and uh, Contra's no different to that. So let's get into it, okay? Now, I went back and I played some of these Contra games again just to kind of refresh my memory. All of these games I played when they first came out, some of them I have not revisited in a long time. Some of them you kind of revisit every so often, you know, maybe every year or something like that. You know, they're quick little plays. Uh, but some of these games I would not touch again. <laughs> and you, you'll hear why. And uh, I'm going to start it off actually with the first game shown here. And that's Contra Legacy of War. Okay. That's this title right here that I'm dragging. Now, this game came out back in 1996. And it was actually outsourced to a studio called Appaloosa Interactive. And this company had previously worked on Echo the Dolphin. Eco, Echo, I've heard it pronounced many ways. I don't know how people want to say it. I've always called it Echo the Dolphin, but recently, when I say recent, Maybe in the last couple of years, I heard people say eco. I'm like, oh shit, I've been saying it wrong my whole life. I don't know. Who cares? Any rate, Legacy of War came out during the period of time that many game companies felt like they had to be forced to take their 2D you know, game franchises and move them to a 3D polygon engine. So if you remember like some of the top down stages from previous Contra titles, that's pretty much what you're gonna get here. The entire game uses the top down perspective from those levels. So personally, like I wasn't a big fan of the top down stages, but I tolerated it knowing that once I completed the top down stage, we would return back to the normal side scrolling stages that we've all come to know and love. Also, this game came out during the beginning of the PlayStation 1 Sega Saturn era. And if you recall, the original PS1 controller, as well as the Saturn, you know, never had it, but the original PS1 controller didn't have analog sticks. It only had the D-pad. So you had to use the L and R buttons to direct your weapons in place of the dual stick setup. So, you know, if you want it, um, your gun to shoot left, you had to use the L button, right? The R button. It was not a, it was not conducive. It did not feel good at all. So the controls were horrible on this game. Let me just get that out there. Graphically, the game was not very attractive. Uh, just as most games that kind of forced their way into the 3D landscape for the first time, they weren't very attractive. So to me, like it's too bad Konami decided to go 3D with Legacy of War. Personally, I wish they would have taken the same path they took for Castlevania Symphony of the Night and used you know, that high quality 32-bit side-scrolling art. But unfortunately, they did not. So Contra Legacy of War is no doubt a D ranking. Uh, you know, if there was an F ranking on this tier, I would give it an F, okay? I would say there's no reason for anybody to play this game. And I'm, I'm, I'm being brutally honest, but it's the truth. 
Don't play it, okay? So next up here, we have Operation C for Game Boy. And this game was cool because it was its own Game Boy game and not a port of the, you know, like the NES game to Game Boy. That's often what we saw, you know, throughout the beginning of the Game Boy era. Like if a title did well on the NES, it would get ported over to the Game Boy. You know, uh, there's millions of examples. Off the top of my head, take like DuckTales, you know, one and two. Great games developed by Capcom. Awesome games on the NES. Actually, DuckTales is one of my all-time favorites for the NES. And, of course, it's going to get a Game Boy port, but it's the same game, you know? It's just portable, and obviously with the Game Boy graphics, black and white. So that's usually what you got, but with Operation C, you actually got a whole new, brand new Contra game. And it actually did a pretty good job back in the day of recreating the home console feel of Contra on a portable screen, which was a pretty impressive feat. So for me, I would say, honestly, Operation C would be a B. It's worth playing today. And it's especially worth playing on the Contra Anniversary Collection. Because then you can actually see, because if you try playing this on your original Game Boy, obviously you're going to have a hard time actually seeing the game. I don't know how we didn't all go blind playing the Game Boy back in the day. Alright, next up we have Contra 3 The Alien Wars for Game Boy. And for me, Alien Wars was impressive because it took the Super Nintendo Contra Alien Wars. And for the most part, it replicated the feel of the 16-bit Super Nintendo game. So, of course, like today, the preferred way of playing Contra 3 The Alien Wars would be on the Super Nintendo. But if you didn't have a SNES growing up, but you had a Game Boy, like this was your ticket to playing Contra 3. And you wanted a ticket to play Contra 3 because... Contra was at a very high level of popularity, and it still is to this day. But Contra 3, and we'll get we'll get into a little bit later in the video, is a very, very excellent game. So for me, Operation C was cool for Game Boy. Because it, it basically took the NES, which you'd get on the NES, and we got it on the Game Boy. But Contra 3 took what you would get on a Super Nintendo and brought it to the Game Boy. That was like a very impressive feat because we're talking like a 16-bit game going onto the Game Boy and they did a pretty damn good job of replicating it. If I were to rank it for how I felt about it back then, it would be an A rating. If I were to rank it today, it would be a B. So let's keep it real on how we felt about it when it was released. It may sound funny, but for what this game did, it should get an A rating. Okay, next up we have Contra Hardcore. Now, this game really came out of left field from Konami. Much in the same way that Castlevania Bloodlines arrived on the Sega Genesis. It was a welcome surprise. You know, I remember going to Blockbuster in seeing Contra for Sega, and previously Contra had never came out on Sega, just in the same way that previously Castlevania had never released on the Sega Genesis. So I was pretty excited that we're getting, obviously, a Contra game now. So to me, the difficulty is in the title. This game is totally hardcore. The game was very hard. The bosses were brutal. You truly had to memorize the boss's attacks and movements in order to stand a chance at seeing the game's ending screen. It was an excellent soundtrack provided by, you know, Sega's classic blast processing and some pretty cool special effects for the 16-bit console. Uh, to me, the game is absolutely worth playing, but it's not for the faint of heart. If you don't have the patience for Souls-like games, then you likely won't have the patience for Contra Hardcore. But if you appreciate a good ass whooping and then learning from your ass whooping, 
then you will appreciate what Konami has to offer with Contra Hardcore. So for me, this gets an A rating. It's right up there with the best of the Contras. Next we have Contra. I'm going to go with the sequel here. This came out on PlayStation 2. Or actually, no, this was PS3. This is Contra Hardcore Uprising. So story-wise, you should play Contra Hardcore first because this is actually a direct sequel. And there are some story elements to it. This story is not a huge deal in the Contra games. You know, it's in the action and the gameplay and everything else. But, you know, if you want to actually see what the story is all about, I would suggest playing the Sega Genesis version first. So, remember, you can play the original Hardcore, by the way, on the Contra Anniversary Collection for PS4, Switch, and Xbox. So... If you're patient, you can usually get it on sale for as little as five to ten dollars on, you know, the Switch Shop, the PlayStation Store, Xbox Shop, which to me is an absolute steal given what you get. But Uprising uses an anime style, but it surprisingly works well. Like when I first saw screenshots, yes, yeah, screenshots for it back in the day. Uh, I didn't know what to think about it. I'm like, you know, why are we going anime? That was kind of the thing. You know, people were going anime, you know. Companies were going cell shaded with, obviously, Zelda Wind Waker. It was like a common thing back in that era. But it, it worked actually really well. <clears throat> and there was a rising mode in the game, which was really cool. This is what made it, like, stand out from other Contra games. But if you play the rising mode, it's like the main mode, but you can earn points each level. And you can use the points to purchase new weapons, weapon upgrades, etc. So you can like basically upgrade your character. So like say if you can't get past level 5 for the life of you, you can go back to level 1 and earn some points and then use those points to upgrade your character and then return back to level 5 with those upgrades to help you beat the level. And that really made it stand out. So to me, this game was really fun. I think this is an A rating all day. It's right there with the best of the Contras. And I say the best, I know we have an S tier ranking and we'll get to that, we'll get to that. So next we have Contra. And you know, this is the game that started it all. This is the game that nobody could beat because you start it with three lives if you got hit once you died and it wasn't so later on and you got to remember guys this is the 80s so there is no internet there's no way to know this information but the konami code came out and people called it the Contra code, but it was really the Konami code because you could use it in different Konami games. But basically at the title screen, you had to plug in the Konami code, which we all know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, and then start and you'd get 30 lives. And you really, you needed 30 lives to beat the game. And I'll be honest, most people could not beat the game with 30 lives. That's how hard it is. And Beating the game with 30 lives was like an impressive enough accomplishment. But if you could beat the game without using the Konami code and somebody could like actually attest to you beating the game without the code, because you, re you remember people don't have, you know, cell phones with cameras and the ability to record achievements. You know, these video game systems wouldn't record, uh, you know, your platinum trophy achievement. Like, we didn't really have any way to prove what you had just done. Like people didn't have video cameras unless you were filthy rich. So you, you had to have proof of it. Like somebody that could actually attest to you beating the game without using the code. But if you could do that, man, like it would be a badge of honor that you basically get to wear for the rest of your life. So the OG original Contra, this is what started it all. You know, uh, fighting aliens, the memorable soundtrack, everything about this game, the huge bosses. It was just bad, bad ass. And I have a lot of love for Contra. 
this started it all guys without this we don't have anything else so this is s tier that's right that is the first s tier contra for this ranking amazing game if you haven't played it guys play it it's it's on the uh nes classic edition you know the miniature nes of course the nintendo came out with and that's a great way to play it if you don't own the cartridge. Otherwise, you know, there's plenty of other ways to play games for regular Nintendo that you can look up on the internet. So next up we have Contra Shattered Soldier. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to go with the Contra Adventure next. You need to know the story of C. C. That's the name of the title, C, the Contra Adventure, but it's called C. I have to talk about this game first because it makes you appreciate Shat Shattered Soldier even more knowing the story about this game. So let's get into it. This game right here is the sequel to Contra Legacy of War. This game is horrible it's worse than contra legacy of war which i don't think anyone thought was possible back in the day so this game came out in 1998 two years after legacy of war uh, this game doesn't even resemble contra back in the day ign awarded this game one of if not the worst review scores i've ever seen and I've been reading IGN since the days of IGN64.com before it even became IGN.com. So this is like back in 1996, I've been reading IGN. IGN awarded this game a one out of 10, one out of 10. Like, I I don't know about you guys, I've never seen a game get a one out of 10 outside of this. And also, like, the game title, like I said, it's called C. The game title is pretty stupid. Like, imagine back in the day you're at school and you ask your friends, hey, guys, like, you want to come over and play C? You know what I mean? Like, wh what? Like, they are supposed to know that C is the name of a Contra game? It's stupid. Everything about this game is awful. It's not worth playing. It's not even worth buying from like a collector standpoint. I'd say if you happen to find this game at maybe a garage sale or something, like I would pay 50 cents for it, but I would not even put it in my PlayStation. I wouldn't play it. I would just have it just merely as a talking point, you know, as a collection piece, but it's, it's the biggest piece of crap video game. Okay. Now, with that out of the way, we can get to Contra Shattered Soldier. This was the next Contra to come out after See the Contra Adventure. This came out on the PS2. So Shattered Soldier was the return to side-scrolling Contra. It was a joyous moment really for everyone when I think we saw the first screenshots and trailer hit the internet because Konami decided to go back to side-scrolling Contra. And nobody liked the previous two Contra games. Nobody understood why Konami decided to go with this top-down view that everyone hated. It's like the games are getting terrible reviews. Why do you keep doing the same thing? It's like they didn't even listen to anybody. It was unbelievable. But I, you know, I don't want to harp on it too much. You guys know it's just complete crap. So Shattered Soldier, again, brought us the return of 2D side-scrolling Contra. And thankfully, Konami must have learned from its previous PS1 titles that you don't have to force 3D visuals on the game for people to want to play the game. So for me, to this day, Shattered Soldier is one of the finest examples of 2D Contra done right. It's basically OG, you know, NES, Super Nintendo Contra that we grew up with, but with PlayStation 2 visuals. The only knock that this game gets, but I don't even know if it's a real knock, is that it's really hard. But Contra games are really hard. 
And I, I think it's just a sign of the generations. Like, growing up, we wanted the game to be really hard. Because that means you got to play it more. You know, like, once we played the game and beat it, we didn't return to it all the time. I mean, some games you would. Like, Zelda on regular Nintendo, I still return to every now and again. Mario 3. But... An achievement like beating Contra, once you do it, you're like, all right, dude, I'm good. I can say I did it. I beat Contra. So we, we really liked the hard games growing up. So Sh Shattered Soldier for me is definitely A tier. It's borderline S tier. It is borderline, but I'm going to go A tier. So next we have the sequel to Shattered Soldier. This is the direct sequel, actually. And it's called Neo Contra. And for some reason, guys, again, I can't explain the decisions that Konami makes. Uh, I, I still, I, to this day, I can't explain the things that they do. You know, like, why don't we have a new Castlevania? Why don't we have a new Metal Gear Solid? Will we have one soon? I hope so. They got a PlayStation uh, showcase coming up here from what I'm hearing in the rumors sometime in May. And I'm hearing rumors that we might hear about uh, some sort of Metal Gear and Castlevania exclusive. But that's a whole nother story. But again, I can't explain what they do, guys. But for some reason, Konami decided to go back to an overhead camera angle. So, like, Sh Shattered Soldier did really good. There was no reason to do this. So why they do what they do is beyond me. Because in my experience and knowledge... Most people did not prefer this type of gameplay. Neo Contra could have taken what worked in Shattered Soldier and built upon that foundation, but instead they decided to go completely rogue with the gameplay and camera angle. The game's not horrible or unplayable by any means, and it's much better than Legacy of War and obviously see the Contra Adventure. But I'll still never understand why they try to fix something that's not broken. So it may sound like I poo-pooed this game, but it's still worth playing if you can find it for a decent enough deal. I would probably, if I were going to give it a numerical review, I'd give it like a, a six or seven out of 10. So for me, honestly, this is probably a C. So it's, it's worth playing if you really like Contra and you wanna see what it's all about. That's where I stand with that one. All right, next we have Contra 3, The Alien Wars. So I'll say it right off the bat. For me, this is elite S tier Contra all day. Like, I don't even have to think about it. This is what we would call a no-brainer. Contra 3 took everything it learned and that worked well from the previous NES Contra games and made it into you know a brand new Super Nintendo game. And that's exactly what you got. Um, Contra 3 took advantage of the Super Nintendo's uh, Mode 7 graphics, which was really cool. You got to see some pretty cool special effects on the Super Nintendo that you wouldn't have been able to see on say the NES or the Sega. And to me, this is like the best representation of Contra. And it's crazy because the best representation of Contra happened all the way back in 1994. That's when this game came out. So it's been almost 30 years and this is still, to me, the best Contra, which is wild. Like, come on guys, pretty sad because in my opinion, Konami could literally do the same thing and take advantage of today's consoles you know the the power the hardware and it would be an absolute hit but they don't instead they released a game called contra rogue core back in 2019 that was absolutely awful and once again barely i wouldn't even say barely it just doesn't even resemble contra and they went for the stupid isometric top-down view that nobody likes like, come on, man. Like, why don't you send out some customer surveys and see what the fans want before you decide to drastically change a winning formula in place of a losing formula? 
Like you don't have to lose. You can be a winner, Konami, but they decided not to. And you'll see that this game's not even on the list because it's a total piece of crap and it's not even real Contra, okay? So Contra 3 The Alien Wars for Super Nintendo is all day, every day, S tier. And I think most people would agree with that. So next we have Contra in the arcade. So this is where it all started. You know, most of us, I think, we played Contra for the first time on the regular Nintendo. But it was actually, like I said, released in the arcade first. And the arcade cabinet monitor went for a vertical approach. Instead of the standard, you know, CRT, which always made this game stand out a little bit. So I played Contra in the actual arcade uh, recently, actually in the last few years. And I played the arcade version on a home console by way of the Contra Anniversary Collection. And it's a cool bit of history and totally worth playing to see where it all started. But at the end of the day, I prefer the NES version. The NES version is actually longer than the arcade version too. Graphically speaking, I think it comes down to a matter of preference. Sure, the arcade version had better graphics and special effects, but the NES version ran way smoother in my opinion. Like it had tighter controls, the jumping mechanics were much better. Just everything felt better on the NES. I don't know if it's because, you know, in the arcade you're using a joystick and with the NES you're using the D-pad. But either way, Contra for the arcade is definitely a great game. It's worth playing. It's just not anywhere close to as good as the NES version. So I have to give it a B. Totally worth playing. I would play it on the Contra Anniversary Collection. So next we have Contra Advance. And this game was really cool. You know, it's it's what you'd expect. It's Contra on the GBA. It's the Alien Wars on GBA. Uh, it's just it, it had already been done. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't add anything to it. This is just Contra on the GBA. It's the Super Nintendo game on the GBA. So it was cool to be able to play it on the go. She didn't do anything new. So I'm going to go ahead and give this. It's still an A because the game's still amazing. It's just it didn't do anything different. So that's why Contra 3 The Alien Wars still gets the S tier. Next we have Contra 4. And Contra 4 was for the Nintendo DS. And this is actually the last numerical entry in the Contra series, oddly enough. So if you have a Nintendo DS system, any Nintendo DS, then you should really play Contra 4. Playing Contra on a dual screen is pretty damn awesome, and Konami made really great use of both screens. Like, the action will literally take place on the top screen and move to the bottom screen, and vice versa. So it was really cool. Uh, Contra 3 Four came back, came out all the way back in 2007, and it fetches a pretty high price nowadays on eBay. If you just want the cartridge, you can get it for around 30 to 40 bucks. And I don't know if they're legit cartridges, you know, I don't know if they're original. But if you want it like complete in box, it's gonna cost 75 to 100 and upwards depending on the seller. But to me, this is a must-play title if you have the means to play it. Contra 4 gets definitely an A ranking. Next, we have Contra Rebirth. And it's kind of what the title sounds like. Uh, it's a WiiWare title. It never had a, a retail release. It was only on the Wii. And like I said, the title of the game says it all. It was sort of a rebirth for the Contra franchise. It took, you know, pieces from the original Contra games and just gave it pretty much a new coat of paint, which was fine because we hadn't had a Contra game in a while and people were happy about that. And so it's the side-scrolling Contra that we all know and love. Uh, the game, I'd say, can be most comparable to the Alien Wars, which... You know, that's S tier. 
But for some reason, it's kind of weird. The game only had three weapons, which was sort of odd since previous games in the series had like much more variety. But regardless, it's a great title in the Contra series and it's certainly worth playing if you have a way of playing it. So I downloaded this game from the Wii eShop back in the day when it was first released. Like I downloaded it the day it came out. I was very much looking forward to it. But obviously like the Wii eShop closed back in January 2019. So if you didn't buy it back then, there's only one way to play it and it takes a little bit of know-how to do. You can use Google if you are really interested in playing this title, you know, when there's where there's a will, there's a way. So if you really have the will to play it, you will find a way. Google is your friend, guys. Contra Rebirth gets an A. Next, this one. Contra Force. Man. Weirdest weirdest release. So I actually own this NES game. I think I obtained this one close to 20 years ago, and it was incredibly rare. 20 years ago and the game is not great it's not good it's not mediocre it's it's horrible because it's unplayable uh sadly it suffers from absolutely debilitating frame rate slowdown it's hard to know if it could have been a good game because the slowdown is so bad that it makes it unplayable like you can't even see the whole game you know like I don't even know like, how this got the Nintendo seal of quality approval. You know, in order to receive the Nintendo seal of quality, it meant that Nintendo had like vetted the game to ensure that it works on consoles without any issue. And it's crazy because like this game's unplayable. It really shouldn't have. This game barely worked. And it's sad that in today's modern age of technology, the Konami wouldn't go back and fix the game slowdown and release it on the Contra Anniversary Collection. You know, like, that would have been the ultimate, I don't know, apology and thank you for buying this game back in the day on NES. You know, like, hey, I know it's been, you know, 20, 30 years, but we fixed the game. You can buy it on the Anniversary Collection. We know it was crap. We're sorry. It just would have been a really, really great opportunity to do some serious fan service. But instead, the only way to play it is if you own the actual cartridge or, again, by other means that you can find on Google. So Contra Force gets a D. If you guys look this game up on eBay, you'll see that it costs quite a bit of money. Next, we have Super C. So Super C, Super Contra, was the direct sequel to Contra. Uh, it's more of everything that you enjoyed about the original Contra. Uh, it's an awesome game. It's not as memorable as OG Contra because it really didn't introduce anything new. It was just more of the same. But it's still a great game and totally worthy of adding to your gaming collection. I teeter between an S tier and an A tier, but if I'm if we're being like super real, you know, it's an A, it's A, it's not S. You know, these are the two best games right here: Contra and Contra Three: The Alien Wars, and that's just that. And then, lastly, we have Super C, the arcade game. So once again, the sequel Super C had the vertical monitor. And it, like, it totally stands out in the arcade. You know, you, you don't see any other arcades look like this outside of, I think, Frogger. I'm sure there's some other ones. Frogger is what comes to mind first. But, you know, much like its predecessor, many, including myself, prefer the NES version of Super C over the arcade version. And really, it's all for the same reasons. The game was longer. It had tighter controls, better sound, and overall just felt much more polished. You know, back in the 80s, 90s, Konami was on another level with their game development. You know, whether it was like a new game series like Castlevania or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or an arcade port of Contra or even Jackal, which is a total gem, 
Konami released some of the most memorable games in the NES's library. And they did such a good job of bringing these games to regular Nintendo. So good that it was better than the arcade game. So this will go on B tier right next to the original Contra arcade game. And there you have it, guys. That is a breakdown of Contra. Contra is an is really an amazing series. Like as you can see, it's had its ups and downs. To me, it's had a lot of ups, but you know, as of late, I don't know what they're gonna do. I would love to see Konami bring a return to the 2D side scrolling Contra. That's what we all know and love. Like I said, you know bringing out a Contra game today using today's technology would be really awesome. You know, just have some nice, cool special effects. We've seen other game companies do this. You know, we just saw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge that came out last year. You know, it's it used the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles formula and brought it to modern day consoles with modern day tech but it's still the same like gameplay and formula and it was amazing and it sold amazing so like take notes dude like you could do this too so hopefully we will see a return to contra but if we don't guys you should go out and play these games and i again you can buy the contra anniversary collection and you can get most of these games not not anywhere close to all but you get contra super contra for regular Nintendo, you get Contra 3 The Alien Wars for Super. You get Contra The Alien Wars and Operation C for Game Boy. And you get Contra Hardcore for Sega. And you get both of the Contra games for the arcade. So, pretty good deal if you can get it, like I said, for 5 10 bucks. Also, there is a physical version that was published by Limited Run Games. I have that. It's really cool. So if you're interested in getting a physical version, it will probably fetch a pretty penny one of these days. As, as the years go on, it'll probably be a sought after title, just like the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. So there you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy yourself some Contra. Hope you have a great day.